In this next lecture, we're going to uh, do more observations on how we can combine stuff. So we did our products. Let's do division. And so here we have uh, six tens on the numerator and two tens in the denominator. So we're working with numerator, denominator. And now we want to know how do we simplify that. So remember, equivalent fractions. What does equivalent fractions allow you to do? You can divide numerator and denominator by the same quantity. We have the same numbers 10 on numerator and denominator. So I can divide numerator and denominator by 10 and another 10. So I ended up reducing this fraction. And so what am I left with? So this 10 divided into 10 once. This 10 divides into this 10 once. So you're really dividing each of these by 10. So your denominator is going to be 1. Numerator is going to be what? 10 to the 4. Good. And so how did we get the 4? Look, we have 6 tens on the numerator, 2 tens in the bottom. So really, we eliminated the 2 from the bottom by division. So when you divide base to exponent and same base to a different exponent, you can subtract the exponents. That's what we're observing here. Let's do a few more to make sure that that really is what's happening. <clears throat> x divided by x, x divided by x, another x divides into x, and you're left with x to the 5, or 8 minus 3. Can you see that? It's very, very important you pay attention here. So when you have same base to an exponent divided by same base to an exponent, Remember how to make equivalent fractions. That is allowing us to simplify now. All right, so then when you divide base to an exponent divided by same base to another exponent, you can subtract the exponents and get your answer. All right, so now that you've solved simpler problems, let's combine what we had in the previous lecture to this one. So we already know that 10 to the 6 over 10 to the 2, we can subtract exponents, and we had 10 to the 4. And now we have 10 to the 4 to the 3rd. What does that mean? We already know how to do that, right? 10 to the 4, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 4, three times. So that would give me 10 to the 12. All right, do this on your own. Pause the video here, please. All right, so you're going to have um, 5 to the power what? 11, because 3 of the 5s from the denominators, we can divide out using the equivalent fraction concept. And that's what you got. All right, try this. We're going to now not just extend it to uh, numbers, but let's do it with something that is not numbers. And remember how it's the same principle. Can you see that? So you have five of these on top, two of these on the bottom. And we can make equivalent fractions by dividing this out. And so five of these, when you divide two of them out, you end up with three left over on the numerator. Now what? See that negative. Does that belong to the inside, or does it stay on the outside? It's very important how you read it. How do you read it? You're watching this on your own, so read it out loud. Now I will read it and see if this is how you read it. Negative of d to the 13 over d to the third, the whole thing to the power second. The power of 2 belongs to the base. All right, so this is going to end up with, so you simplify that first, which will give you d to the 10th. And then the second power will give you uh, negative d to the 20th. Remember, this negative is staying because this negative is not part of the base. All right, try that. Now this negative is part of the base. Remember that. Did you get that? If not, rewind and watch it over and over again until you really get it. So our general observation is that when you have a to power n divided by a to power m, you can take the numerator power and subtract the denominator power. Let's work on some additional problems that cultivate growth mindset. Remember, growth mindset is 
when a person believes that intelligence is achieved through hard work and it's possible to change your current state of intelligence. If you always keep thinking that no matter how hard you work, you're never going to be smart or you're never going to succeed, that is called fixed mindset. And as a lot of brain research we've talked about before shows is hard work, tenacity, and just feeling open to the idea that you can do this allows you to grow your brain and your reasoning skills. So we've done a lot of problem with exponents. See if you can do this problem where we're giving you just a part of the problem and we're asking you if you can fill in the rest of it. So basically you are creating a problem for which the answer is given. See how much fun that is. Go ahead, try it. Pause the video here and see what you can do. If you're not sure, let's do the first one together. We have a to the 15 divided by something giving you a to the 7. Right away you know the base has to be what? The base has to be a. What about the exponent? The exponent has to be such that when you do this division, you end up with 7, a to the 7 as your answer. So the only way that's going to happen is remember, we have, if you 15 and the bottom denominator exponent is going to be subtracted. So if you put 8, 15 minus 8 will give you 7, right? So a to the 7. So base is fixed exponent has to be 8 so that this division will produce the answer of a to the 7. Go ahead, pause the video and see if you can do all the rest of them. You can do it, just give it a try. I know some of you are like, oh yeah, I got it, and we'll whiz right through it. Others just looking at the problem might freak out, but please remember, don't freak out. Take a while, just see what you can do. Patience is the key here. And it is okay, remember, to get wrong answers. So just try something, put something in the boxes, and then we will see what the answers are together in just a little while. All right, so here we have, again, base in part B should be A, right? Because the answer is A to the power something. 15 is on the denominator. So if you want 7, you need 7 more than 15, so 22 has to be exponent here. Because 22 minus 15 is 7. All right, let's see what you can do here. Again, base has to be 2. And power can be anything you want because no, there's no fixed answer. You could have 0, 4, 5, whatever. Whatever power you pick, let's say I pick 8. Once you pick that power, then the bottom is fixed because now the base has to be 2 and the power has to be 3 because 8 minus 3 is 5. So do you think you can come up with another answer, not my answer? Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can replace 2 to the 8 with something else. So we have, I can say 2 to the power, what? Pick something, so let's say 12. What do you think the denominator will have to be then? 2 to the power, good job, 7. All right, let's see this next one here. Accidentally, I already clicked the next one. So base is 3x minus 1 because you have 3x minus 1 to power 9. I can pick whatever power I want here. So I'm going to pick 10. Well, then I just need one more 3x minus 1. I don't have to write the 1 if you have just 3x minus 1. So I could write my answer this way but I'm putting the one there just for people who may not see what this exponent is. So try another one then. Replace the 10 and the one by some different power. Go ahead. So I can pick 12, like I did in the first part C, but then in to get nine, I would need how many more? Go ahead, think about it. Good job, three. So here, we have done these problems and you can see that C and D have infinitely many answers, but so they are not unique. But A and B, the answer has to be fixed because one of the quantities was already given to you for the numerator or denominator. So in order to get the same answer, if one of the quantities is given to you, the other one is fixed. 
but if the answer is given to you and you are free to choose whatever, then you can pick any values you want. What if I had picked in part C 2 to the 0 power in the denominator? Remember 2 to the 0 power is 1, so then it will just be 2 to the 5th. So lots of infinitely many answers possible for C and D. Alright, so continuing our discussion of exponents, do you remember what we did? 2 to the 3rd over 2 to the 3rd. If you want it to be consistent with what we just looked at, which was quotient of exponents, you're going to end up with 2 to the 0 power. Oh, we did not talk about what it means to say 2 to the 0 power. We know what 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2nd, what that means. What about 2 to the 0? Well, we also have equivalent fraction concepts. So we can also think of 2 to the 3rd as 8 divided by 8. And so by equivalent fractions, that is the same as 1, isn't it? So that would mean that 2 to the 0 would have to equal 1. That you don't really have a choice, do you? So we make a formal definition then that for all non-zero real numbers a, we define a to the 0 equaling 1. So when you have a base raised to an exponent of 0, you're going to end up with 1. And why is that? because of this, because of the quotient of exponents that we were looking at before, isn't it? To make it consistent, we have to have this to the power, uh, 2 to the power 0 equaling 1. So a lot of times people think a to the 0 is 1, but they don't understand why. But if you remember why, you will have an easier time remembering the rule. All right, so another example. Let's take a look at 10 to the second over 10 to the sixth. That will give us 10 to the negative 4. We have not made sense of negative exponents yet either. But remember, when you are a mathematician, whatever you make definition of, it has to be consistent with the previous definitions. So let's move that aside for a second and let's look at what 10 to the second over 10 to the sixth looks like. We can divide the tens from the numerator and denominator by using our equivalent fractions. And now look what's left. We have 1 over 10 to the 4. So what do you think negative exponents should be defined as? It's pretty clear, isn't it? You don't really have a choice. Bend the base to a negative 4 power, then it's 1 over base 10 to the positive 4 power. So negative exponents gives you reciprocals. Reciprocal means 1 over. So in general, what if I had 1 over 10 to the negative 4? What would be that? Let's take a look. I, can, I have equivalent fractions. So here is an example where you are using your past knowledge to uh, become more efficient. So we have equivalent fractions. So we are going to multiply 10 to the 4 on both numerator and denominators. And then you're going to use your rules. 10 to the negative 4 plus 4 is going to give you 10 to the 4 over 10 to the 0, which is 10 to the 4. So, in other words, base raised to a negative exponent does what? 10, the negative exponent changes it into a positive exponent, uh, and you become base that's in the numerator goes and sits in the denominator. So if you have base to a negative exponent, it, if it's in the numerator, it will go sit in the denominator with a positive exponent. Then you can evaluate it. Similarly, if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, then the base moves from the denominator to a numerator. So negative 4 power becomes positive 4 power. Look very, very carefully. This is going to help you tremendously. So negative exponent does what? If your quantity is sitting in the numerator, how is this a numerator? It's over 1, isn't it? So if you have something in the numerator with a negative exponent, you can take it to the denominator and make it positive exponent. If it already is in the denominator, you can take it to the numerator and make it positive exponent. So we already now know what negative exponents are going to stand for. So these kind of observations lead us to extend our exponent definition to all integers then by remembering what? That if n is a counting number, a to the power negative n is the same as 1 over a to the n. And a to the 
power n, positive n, is the same as 1 over a to the negative n. This is very important. See if you can make sense of this. <clears throat> so if I say evaluate 3 to the negative second power, well, that doesn't mean anything to us until we rewrite it. We know that 3 to the negative second can be written, 3 to the negative second can be written as 1 over 3 to the second power. So you're 1 over 3 to the second, or 1 over 3 times 3, which is 1 over 9. All right, so let's make sure that you really understand the notation of negative exponents. So let's take a look at some practice problems. Why don't you go ahead, pause the video here, see if you can rewrite these problems that are written here in expanded notation as base to a negative exponent. So go ahead, pause the video here, and get used to these notations. They're asking you to write the product as a to a power negative n or 1 over a to the power negative n. Assuming you have come back, let's start with the first one. We have 7 times 7 times 7. So that would be 1 over 7 to the negative 3 power because we have 7 to the positive 3 power. And so if you want to write it as a negative exponent, you would have to write that as 1 over it. If it's negative off, 1 over 7, 1 over 7, 1 over 7, which is 1 over 7 cubed, the negative is the sign of the number, so that will follow through. So we will have negative and then 7 to the power negative 3 because the 7s are in the denominator. Here we have negative 1 over 7 multiplied several times. So negative is with the base, and 7 is the base, and exponent would be 4. So we have negative 7 to the power negative 4 because each of the multiple here has a negative. So each factor here has a negative sign with it, and there are 7, 7, 7, 7, 4 7s multiplied together, so that's why the 4 negative because we're changing it from denominator to numerator. Here we have a in the denominator twice, so it'll be a to the second, and then there's a negative in front, so it'll be negative of a to the negative second power. It's very important to keep track of what these negatives do. Remember, negative exponent makes it go from numerator to denominator, or denominator to numerator, the negative of that negative sign simply makes the quantity negative, which is different than a negative exponent. So we have, here we have negative 7, negative 7, negative 7 multiplied three times. So that's negative 7 to the third power. If you want to write it as a negative exponent, it will have to go in the denominator so it'll become negative 7 to the negative third power in the denominator. So here we have a to the third, because a times a times a. So in the numerator, which means we'll have to go in the denominator and make a negative 3 as an exponent. Here we have a multiplied by itself 3 times in the denominator. So it's 1 over a to the third, or as a negative exponent, it will be a to the negative third. So again, pause the video here, see what you can do. You are given a number, so do a factor tree, figure out what multiplied by itself gives you 32. We'll do the first one for you, 1 over 625. So again, remember, all of your scratch work should be done in the For My Eyes Only column. So on your notes, For My Eyes Only, make a bar, do all your work here. Let's do 1 over uh, 625. So if you factor that, 1 over 625 is 1 over 25 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. Another 5 times 5. So that's 5 to the 4 in the denominator, which will make it 5 to the negative 4 power. So negative 4 is your exponent, and 5 is your base. So pause the video here and attempt 
all of the ones that you see here on your own. Go ahead, pause, really pause, please. Assuming you have paused, 32, we can say 2 goes in 32, so multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 16 times 2, 32. So that's 2 to the 5th. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We know 81 is 9 times 9, and 9 is made up of 3 times 3. So 4 3s will give me 81, but it's negative of 81, so you're going to have to have negative of 3 to the power 4, because 3 times 3 9, 9 times 3 27, 27 times 3 will give you 81. So similarly, this will become negative of 3 to the third power, but we could also write that as negative 3 to the third power, because negative 3 times negative 3 will be positive 9, 9 times negative 3 will give us the negative 27 negative of 1 over 16. Now we have a fraction, so we could use negative exponents, right? So we could write this as negative of 2 to the power negative 4, because 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8, 8 times 2, 16. And 4 in, 2 to the 4 in the denominator would be 2 to the negative 4, where the negative 4 brings the 2 to the numerator. But this negative stays because it's making the whole thing negative. Or I could write that with a positive exponent, but so the negative off stays, and the base would become 1 half instead of 2 if I want to write that as a positive exponent. So anytime you see a negative exponent, think of the base becoming 1 over. All right, so let's try negative 1 over 25. 25 is 5 times 5, so it'll be negative 5 to the power negative second, so it's negative of 5 to the negative second power, or like we did here, it'll be 1 fifth to the power 2. Does that make sense? So remember, negative of makes the number negative or positive, depending on whether it's a positive or negative term. But the negative exponent makes it a fraction base. And if it is a fraction base, it will become a numerator base. So that's one of the biggest difference between what the negative in front for the base means and does so you can think of how the negative in front here basically moves the quantity to the left or right of 0, whereas the negative exponent just moves it above or below in terms of numerator denominator placement. All right, so this next question is asking you to fill in the blanks. And we've done this in the previous section, so just identify base, exponent, expanded notation, and evaluate it. So one additional uh, thing that you have to do is not just figure out what it is, but actually evaluate and give us one number for it, or one quantity for it. So go ahead and pause the video and fill in the chart. Assuming you have come back from pausing, Let's just look at base and exponent, but negative 3 as exponent, which means it's going to turn it into 1 over. So it become 1 over 2 to the third, or 2 to the third means 2 times 2 times 2, so it'll be 1 over 8. Here we have base is a, exponent is negative 6. It's a negative exponent in the denominator, so it'll be changing it to numerator, a to the 6 which is the same as a times a times a six times. Here we have 5x plus 3 is our base. Negative 2 is our exponent. And because it's in the denominator, it will come to the numerator, and it will be the same as saying 5x plus 3 times 5x plus 3. Base is 7. Exponent is negative 2. In the denominator, you have a negative exponent, so become numerator 7 to the second power, which is 7 times 7, or 49. Here we have negative of 1 over 7 to the negative second power, so our base is 7. 
and our exponent is negative 2, and it's negative off, so be negative. And then because the 7 is in the denominator to the negative second power, we'll have a similar situation except negative as part d. So we'll have negative of 7 to the second power. So negative of 7 times 7, or negative 49. Here we have basis 345. It's negative of 345 to power 0. So base 345. Exponent is 0. Remember, where 0 exponent came from, it's always a good idea to know why things work so that if you forgot a formula or if you forget what the rule is, you can always get it. 345, anything to 0 power is 1 because it's the same quantity over same quantity. So the exponents you subtract and you get 0 exponent. So this is going to be negative of. 345 to 0 power or negative of 1. So negative 1, basically. All right, similar thing, but now we're asking you to write in English words what the words are, how you would read it out loud, and then the same thing as before. So pause the video here and see what you can do on your own, and then check if your answers are correct. Please do pause. Go ahead and do it. So again, base is 3, exponent is negative 2. And here we have either 3 to the negative second power or 3 raised to the negative second power. Expanded form, because it's negative exponent, it's going to become denominator. So it'll be 1 over 3 times 3 or 1 over 9. Here we have it in the denominator, so it will turn and go into the numerator. So our base is still 3. Exponent is negative 2. And you would read that as either negative of 1 over 3 to the negative second power, or negative of 1 over 3 raised to the negative second power, which will give you negative, three negative of 3 times 3, or negative 9. Remember the difference between these. They both had negative 2 as an exponent and base 3, but this one became negative because it's negative of something. So look at the difference between the first and the second. This is going to become the same as the first one, but with a negative. So base is 3, exponent is negative 2. So this will become negative of 3 to the negative second power, or negative of 3 raised to the negative second power, which will give you negative of 1 over 3 times 3, or negative 1 ninth.